Hello friends, it's Cindy Brumbaugh from CindyLeeBeeDesigns.com, independent stamping up demonstrator. Today's card is using one of our online exclusive bundles, the fluffiest friends with the sweet little critters here, the bunny, the bird, the little beaver, the bear and kitty and we're gonna say he might be a gerbil or a hamster or a guinea pig um and it's got dyes that go with it also called the fluffiest friends dyes cuts out all those little critters and this little beaver beaver dam nest all the little bird can go in the nest so some really fun things a beehive a branch a couple balloons two different dyes for the grass and the leaves and so we're gonna oh i love that little bird he's so cute so we're gonna take a look at this card here you can see that i cut the front of it out i wanted to show you a few tips on doing that now i use the tree rings hybrid embossing folder on the outside of this one but the one we're gonna make here i'm gonna use our timber 3D embossing folder to see how that looks. Just kind of gives you that wood natural feeling to the card. So I started out with early espresso and that is a half sheet of our cardstock. It's 11 inches by four and a quarter scored at five and a half. And then we have a piece of white for the inside and a piece of pecan pie for the outside. These both measure four inches by five and a quarter. Now what we're gonna do is take some temporary adhesive. This just happens to be the temporary adhesive I'm gonna use. We're gonna put a little bit of that temporary adhesive on there. Um, we don't wanna put a, a permanent one because we don't wanna tear the paper, but we're gonna actually put it on exactly the way you would be layering a layer onto the front of your card. Now I'm gonna take a look at this and see, it looks like I've got a nice 1 8 inch border the whole way around. Now the next thing we're gonna do is open our card up. Oopsie, not, it pulled off there. Um, Cause it's temporary, which is good. Um, but I want to see how, okay. There we go. And then we are going to pull out this fun die right here. Kind of reminds you of that new die that's in the Garden Meadows, one that has the real neat etching around the side. And so we're gonna take that out and we're gonna put that onto our card. And you see as on this card, I just left enough room down here for the sentiment and some room at the top for the tree. Then I'm just gonna take um, a little piece of this uh, highlighter tape that I have that is very easy to get off. And I'm just going to put my, my hive arched die right, I'd say about that. Because what we're gonna do is we are going to cut two layers of cardstock here. So I'm gonna suggest when you run this through, run it in this way. And you don't want etching on the back of this. So if you have a really crappy plate, <laughs> sorry for saying that, but a really scratched up plate. Uh, use a new plate or something that's not going to mar the back of this because you will see the inside of the card. Then we're gonna run that through our Big Shot. Here we go. You guys look at this cute little bear there. And then we're just, gonna, I'm gonna run it through and I'm just running it through my stamp and cut and emboss machine whichever machine you have, and just make sure that it goes the whole way through. Um, and, and I made sure that it's coming the whole way through. See, it has a nice clean back whenever you do that. Now, one thing you're gonna find is you're gonna have two pieces that come out from doing that. And I'm gonna put that right back where it belongs. I lost a button die and I've been mad ever since. You end up with these two coming out. You can cut your branches right out of here and save these for some other fun thing. Okay, so now that we have that, we're gonna pull this off of the front of the card and we're going to put it into our timber 3D embossing folder. So always remember when you're using embossing folders, I mean, this little line here is a nice guide to keep things straight. But the top of the embossing folder is has the word stamping up on it and always run it through with the bound side going through first. And I'm just going to do that old switcheroo with my, my plates. And the 3Ds don't need a, they just use that um, adapter plate that goes on top the thicker one. This happens to be from my old Big Shot. It's gray, but the, no, this is the new one. This is the one that goes with the new stamp and cut and emboss machine. So you're putting this 
right on top of plate one. So plate one, embossing folder, never, ever, upon penalty of death, put it like this. It's gonna roll through and it's gonna emboss lovely, but it's gonna curl your embossing folder that will never curl back flat. So I always joke around with my girls at class upon penalty of death. <laughs> so now we have this fun background here with the, the wood grain on it. And so we're just going to go ahead and glue that onto the front of our card. So we can be generous because with an embossing folder, you wanna get that glue into the grooves there so it sticks nice. So I'm just putting some glue. I'm not worrying about putting too much. Uh, there we go. And then you just plop this onto the front of the card, right where the opening is. Kind of easy to do because you just line up that opening there. So make sure, because it is glue, you do have a little wiggle room, but not as much as I would like. Uh, so I'm just going to, uh, you know what? It's almost easier if you look this way, then you can actually see except for if somebody's watching you or hundreds of people are watching you. Okay, so it looks like I'm covering that up and it looks like I'm getting a nice equal border the whole way around. I can see a little here down on the bottom. So let me pull that, push that. There we go. Okay, so now we have our border on the back. Now, we are actually going to put, now if you wanna temporarily do this, you can. I'm gonna go ahead and use my stamp and seal, knowing that if I do have to pull it off, I can. Is my stamp and seal working right now? Huh. It, let me get it rolling here. It looks, to, appears to have um, gotten a little, okay, so it's not working. So we'll worry about that later. We'll just pull out the old snail here. So I'm gonna put some snail on here because we're gonna stamp in the middle of that arch. So if you don't wanna to commit to putting it down, you can just put it temporarily again, okay? And then we're going to take our bear and we're going to get our memento black and we're going to stamp that bear in the middle there. And you can pretty much tell the shape of his body, so it'll fit in there nice. But keep it down towards the bottom. Nice pressure there. Got that cute little bear there. And then we're gonna put some... <laughs> Isn't that adorable? Jim knows that I was making a video and he turned the TV on. He goes, I'm sorry, I'm gonna turn it off. I have him well trained. He is a good boy. Okay, so I am going to put the little bees up around his head. A good idea is to stamp them beside you so that you can tell they're going in the right direction. And little bees there. We can put some little bees above his other ear. It's almost like they just fit right there. Ha, there you go. <laughs> So cute. So there's our little bees. And then we are going to stamp some flowers as well that are also in that stamp set. The stamp set's got some cute little thing, cute little flowers and these cute little bees. This little bee here is doing a diver bomb there. Okay, so I'm going to stamp these. Okay, now, because I don't want to stamp off onto the cardstock because you will see it, just take a piece of scratch here. Okay, and just put it up against, just put it up against your white, okay? So that you won't go across that, okay? And I just put those a little bit down from the bear. There's some there. And we'll come over here. I don't wanna put it under the paper because putting it under the paper is gonna give you a lump. Okay, ooh, getting a little close there, Cindy, okay. And then I'm gonna also stamp some over on this side. Okay, so we've got flowers on both sides and no overage onto the, the, onto the 
early espresso cardstock. So we're gonna go ahead and color those little sweetie pies flowers. I'm just gonna do them daffodil. This is the dark daffodil delight. I must have about seven of these markers because it seems to be the one I use the most and then it ends up getting, the brush end gets used a lot. But the blunt tip ends up being pretty usable on all my markers. Okay, so I'm just coloring in, starting to layer in some pretty colors with that. And oh, don't we know, our honey is also going to be daffodil. So get that honey colored. And then we're going, I'm using gray granite, light gray granite for my, my little honey pot. There we go, the pot of honey. Just put it up around there. Even though Jim has the TV off, I don't know if you can hear him crunching on potato chips. <laughs> We're going over to our little granddaughter's house in a, about an hour. We're not eating right away, so we stocked up on some food. Snack a little before you get there. Okay, so I just, you know, I'm not the world's best blender, but the thing that's great about our stamping blends is you do not have to be the best blender. Um, they just, even if they streak a little, it looks like you wanted it that way. Now I'm gonna go ahead and use my Stampin' Write markers to put, do these little leaves because they are so tiny that you can't see streaking with them. So I can use that fine tip paint there. And I tend to use that on these little, little tiny leaves that are on images because they're just so easy to color in. And I might say that I'm gonna do the same thing with the bees. I'm gonna grab my I'm gonna grab my marker and color in my bee bodies. Actually, you know what? Is this the right color? Oh, this is pineapple punch. Okay, so let's just go back to our, we'll go ahead and use our blends. But they are, they're easy enough to do. The blunt end fits right into the bodies there. Okay, so we've got our yellow on there. Now for my bear, um, I couldn't decide if his snout should be darker or his, um, body like if it, if the snout was darker than the body or lighter it seemed to be when i looked around that his snout was um lighter colored in most people's renditions of him so i just used light crumb cake for his little face and then i'm going to use light pecan pie and like i said once again i am not the most artistic colorer i just try to kind of go um back and forth and just fill in the areas I need to do. When I get, I do a lot of turning so that I'm always coloring against an edge because that's just the way my hand seems to work. And then when I'm getting here, I just go a little bit lighter. The thing about blends is you do not need much pressure. And if you have your blends getting ratty on you, it's probably because you're doing, it's like you barely have to touch the paper you barely touch the paper and it's and it's coloring. So here we are. Oh, I just went out of the lines, but that's okay. Usually I don't like to color online because I'm afraid I'm gonna mess up, but I have confidence that you guys won't judge. Okay, so get his little paw there. This little critter, I, d I couldn't ima I could not believe how many dyes were in this set. So cute. I'm gonna get his little foot, but I'm gonna do the paw pads in a little bit darker. But I'm not sure that that's totally right. I don't know if they would be lighter or not. I haven't looked at the my bear lately. Ha ha. Okay, so now I'm just getting a little bit crazy here because I'm waiting for my colors to 
and I noticed that I got a little bit, I'm gonna have to darken him a little bit because I kind of wasn't paying attention and I started um, getting a little bit darker. So I'm, but you see how like I, it just looked like to me, like I could see a little bit of lines from when I was coloring because I kind of stopped right in mid, probably concentrating on what I'm saying. But all you do is go over and it just makes it a little darker. But I do, but if you do one place, you almost have to go back and, so we'll note, you'll notice whenever I finish this card, how it has a little bit. So this is almost like dark pecan pie. And that's like when you, when you wanna go in and just make it a little bit darker. Okay, so we are gonna see if the dark pecan pie is actually gonna be darker on his pop, on his feet. Yeah, see, they're a little bit darker. Okay, but I did notice here that I didn't get all this, so I'm gonna fill that in. Look at me, I look like an artist, don't I? Okay, now if you have this little carryover here, all you do is get out your, <laughs> what my girls call the white marker, and you just come over and you just do a little bit of erasing. And at first it looks like it didn't do anything and then it does. And if it doesn't do it the first time, let it sit overnight and come back and do it again. So there we go, we got our cute little bear done. Now you'll notice on this card, we have some die cuts on the outside. So I went ahead and cut my die cuts. Boy, I have a mess here, don't I? Um, okay, so we have our little beehive, our beehive. And then we have this branch. And remember, I cut my branch out of that negative that fell out. No, yeah, yeah, no, this is the negative, right? Okay, um, so I'm gonna put this, I wanna have it coming a little bit off, onto the corner there, but I want to have enough room to put a leaf up there. So I think I'll still, yeah, I'll still have room. Um, cause I kind of fiddled around here with this leaf. So, um, a good idea would be to have your, let me see, make sure is have your craft mat, but you know where my craft mat is? It's packed in a little bag, little 31 tote from class on a couple days ago that has not been emptied yet. So here we go. Yeah, I know it's a real long trip from my dining room to my craft room. <laughs> so we're gonna put the little hole for the beehive down towards the bottom, and we're just gonna kind of slip it in. So that means we're only gonna put glue up on the top so it doesn't glue into the inside of your card. And then just pop that beehive right there. And then we have some leaves to play with. The fun thing about this, which I love about this, if you're mass producing and using the stamp set, you have a lot of leaves that you can do at one time and you have two of those uh, grasses. So it makes it super easy also to do. So I'm gonna put a little glue on the tip of that branch and we'll put some leaves there. Okay, they fit, okay. Let's get those ones out of there. And then I'm gonna put this triple leaf here. I'm gonna put that one coming off the tiny little branch. I'm gonna grab my little tweezers here. I'm gonna grab that one and put it coming off that branch there because there's a lot of room coming from that branch. And then I'm gonna pop one on behind the these sometimes are hard to tell which is the good side and the bad side. But you know, once you take a picture of it, it stands out like a sore thumb. Okay, there we go. And I am going to put this one coming off of, eh, we can cover it this way. We don't wanna cover up that little hole. So we'll put it just covering the brown there hold and then we're going to put this one just behind here. 
kind of just like okay there we go so we got some fun little leaves there there's one leaf left there and I should have another leaf because we're gonna put that on our sentiment which is here okay now before we do the sentiment I want to put the grass on the inside because that's going to determine where I want to put my sentiment so we have the grass so we're going to put some glue on the grass on the back of this piece two and this piece two boy was I happy when there were two of these in there so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start on the left side I want to make sure it it goes right by the bear and I'm going to leave a little space on that side and I'm going to do the same thing on this side leave a little bit of space then put this one in the middle because it seemed that three of them fit nicely and if they have to overlap that's okay because I think on my other one they overlap but this one is going to be just perfect to fit in there and when you only put a little bit of glue it works let me see get these ones fitting there so you've got your grass in there along the bear so he's grounded you can write your message to the person you're sending this to right on this spot so I'm not going to stamp any sentiment there because I want that to be the place now you'll notice there's a little bit of white that shows and that's where I decided I would just put my sentiment like that okay so I wanted to dress up my sentiment though and so I put some of these leaves over the little holes and you are saying to yourself Cindy where did you get that dye okay so I'm gonna cover up those little circles and I'm gonna show you where I got that dye. That dye came out of the Labels of Glow dyes that are in the current annual catalog. It's that Christmas set and that long dye. Oh gosh, do you ever, when you, and you know what? I want to find, I, you know what? I'll do it afterwards. I can put that, pop that, another leaf on there. I also found out that I could use my, you know, when you use up these strips, and the, the ones that are kind of half dimensionals, almost the whole sheet fits across the back of this die. There we go. And we'll pop that right at the bottom so that it looks like the grass is coming, that the, the sentiment is coming off the grass. And then I put, but of course I'm missing a leaf. Uh, I thought I die cut a leaf. Okay, well, I'm gonna stick another leaf over here. And then what I did is I used my cute little loose daisy embellishments on here and I decided to use, oh they're so pretty, I decided to use the white ones. So, I don't know, maybe not, yeah, I wanted to use the white ones. Okay, there's one. Those little buggers are hard to get out of there. Now, one, two, ah, that's a perfect one there but I only need one right now until I get that leaf on there. Okay, so I've got my two daisies. I chose the white um, ones, but these daisies have shaded spruce on them. So I had to prune them a little bit and it was so easy. I just cut the shaded spruce off because I thought the shaded spruce was a little um, too dark for what I was going with on my card because I almost changed all my leaves. Um, when I decided I wanted to put, and I mean, these are super easy to do that. Okay, so then we're gonna put a little bit of glue on there and pop a pretty little flower there. And then imagine that there's one over there. 
because there is. I need to put it over there. Let's not lose that. But that is how easy it is to make this fun. Okay, what if you look at it this way, you just say, oh, wow, that's beautiful. <laughs> okay, so here, I actually think I like the trees, tree rings hybrid a little more than the timber. It has a deeper texture to it. <laughs> so isn't that cute? So, um, oh, and I forgot to tell you, this Your Sweet as Honey is coming in a new stamp set that will be coming out in January. So this will be available if you sign up as a demonstrator December 4th and on during the pre-order for demonstrators. So if you are interested in signing up as a demonstrator under me, please feel free to give me a call with any questions. You don't have to do a business if you don't want to. You can just get the 20 to 25% discount um, when you buy the starter kit. And it's gonna be a fun one. So make sure you check out my blog to see the fun things that they'll be giving away with the starter kit. They're having a what's um, a glass stamping mat and a silicone mat and a, um, a special cleaner to clean off your stamps. So it's gonna be a nice uh, celebration sign up coming up. So check out the uh, blog for that information. But this is gonna be really cute with the, the Be My Valentine with the Bee Punch. And that's where I got this cute sentiment from, you're as sweet as honey. Okay, so if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to contact me at cindyleeb at gmail.com. And you can also call me or text me at 724-323-2296. Make sure if you're texting, or actually if you're emailing me, it's cindyleeb at gmail.com. Do not uh, put personal information on the WordPress notification of my blog post because that goes public with my blog. So, uh, you know, you'll find me one way or another and I would love to answer any questions you have and any questions you might have about the starter kit and signing up as a demonstrator. Thanks for buzzing by friends.